Oh, uh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Continuing on from last time. Fittingly, we start with how the hell did this all get started? Obviously, it starts with the elves. Yeah. The first race. Right. The first. That's kind of why we're here in Lothlorien. Yeah. At first, yeah. it started with two trees, which provided the light of the world. Of course, <laughs> that didn't last. Yeah. Now, I realize that I am abridging this quite heavily, but... There's a lot of lore involved, and we need to abridge it if we're going to get through it all. Oh, we are very much going to need to abridge the crap out of it. Yeah. Which brings us to our good friend Morgoth. Now, if I remember correctly, I haven't exactly... Gone. It's been a while since I've read through the origin story for the entire saga, so... Yeah. I believe it was Morgoth who destroyed the trees and plunged the world into darkness. Before mm. everything. Now, I could be very much mistaken. It's, uh... As stated, it's been a while. But eventually, an L. But eventually the elves captured this light into a series of orbs referred to as Cimmerils. Yeah. Which is where the term Cimmerillion comes from. Yeah. In fact, some have uh, theorized, perhaps erroneously, perhaps not, that the Arkan Stone of Hobbit fame is in fact a Cimmeril. Now, I will not give, give, I will not confirm nor deny. As far as I'm concerned, it could I be either one or the other. Doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. But I will not deny the possibility. Yeah. Boing. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's one of those things that's definitely possible, but... In this case, it's a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah grain of salt. Now, again, I could be misremembering this. It's been a while since I actually went through the entire bloody saga. Yeah, and uh, I mainly, I, I've mainly just done the Hobbit and the Lord and the main trilogy. There's enough material in that for. A, I think there's enough material in that just by really? itself. Oh my god. How in the hell? Yeah, there's there's enough material. And I can't say he didn't deserve it. You know, there's enough material in, in the books themselves to, in the in the Hobbit, the and the main Lord of the Rings books. Before you even think of going into the expanded material with the Silmarillion and such, the incomplete, the unfinished tales, it is a complete and utter disaster. And I'm surprised Tolkien even got within five five inches of finishing before he passed away. Yeah. That said. We're respect where it's due, because it's freaking Tolkien. Yeah. Oh. 
can't say he didn't deserve it. Yeah. Well, he's a little bit insane. Yeah. On the subject. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, Gollum... Gollum's more than a little bit insane. Blame the ring. Yeah. It's all anybody can do. Blame the damn ring. Yeah. Okay, walk across that... Oh! Climb across it. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Angry yeah. bird. Uh, Ow. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, it started with the elves and the Silmarils. And the next... And then it gets a little bit worse. After yeah. all, Morgoth is a thing. Yeah. Bastard. Yep. <sighs> I am... The next of the major peoples of Middle Earth, the dwarves, are, you know, are the dwarves, the mas masters of metalworking. It's kind of what they do. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the masters hmm. of metalworking and hmm. uh, the masters of metalworking and. It, and it, obviously they were very they, obviously they did very well I, well I, and they were sort of a prime part of the uh, uh, of the Hobbit with the quest to retake the Lonely Mountain Because the elves, I well, the elves dwell in forests with trees and such. The dwarves dwell, the dwarves dwell underground with, and they mine. Their greatest mine was, more. Their greatest mine was the mine of Kazadum. More Otherwise, no. More popularly known as Moria. Yep. Of course, by the third age of Middle Earth, they were in descendant. They were in uh, decline, just like the elves. In fact, only one of them, ironically Gimli himself, managed to be the only one to get to the Undying Lands. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they were, uh, it, yeah, it was, it became known as Moria after, uh, after the dwarves were dr driven from it. They delved too deeply in search of Mithra, of Mithril, and We all know what they woke up. We don't yeah. need to go into the whole dramatic yeah. retelling. Yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes it works, but it gets a little tiring. Yeah. Anyway, after... Anyway. Another one of the... Uh, the Lonely Mountain was another of their major holdings before Smaug took it over. 
and forced the poor bastards into exile. Yeah. Their main residence by the time of The Hobbit was up in the Iron... Well, they had a few residences, but one of their main communities was in the Iron Hills. And it was in the Iron Hills where Thorin Oakenshield resided. Event right before he began his quest. Uh -huh. and, yeah. And then there's then there are humans or the race of men. Of which there are two kinds. The normal kind and the long lived Numenorian kind. Of which there yeah. are two kinds of them. The faithful, as stated earlier, and the black Numenorians. The ones who who were once the king's men. Who well, we all know what happened to them. The yeah. mouth of Sauron happens to be one of them. Yeah. We're not entirely sure of his name. He doesn't even know it. Yeah. We're not even going to speculate. Yeah. But yeah, men... Uh, men are... Well... Men are like... Are, are sort of... Well, they're your stereotypical fantasy humans. They come in... I am beyond just beyond just the human beyond just the standard men and the Numen and the Numenorians. There are also the various. Uh, I, there were also the. Uh, that, that's going more into that's going more into cultures. Yeah. The men yeah, of rune. Yeah, the, e the Easterlings from Rune, the Salrons, the, the Dun Dunlendings, and everyone's favorite, the Ro the people of Rohan, the yeah, sons the Ro of Eor. Yeah, the Rohirrim, the Horse Lords, who are really not actually natives of Rohan. Right. Yeah, the Easterlings. Yeah, the Dunlenders were not exactly happy with them. And of yeah. course, this actually brings us to something I've wanted to discuss. An inconsistency. Good. Okay. The big inconsistency. Well, first, we've already discussed our good friend Saruman's fate. Yeah. The Scouring of the Shire. By the way, apparently hobbits, or at least the inhabitants of, uh... The Shire? Apparently they're good archers. Yeah. Never seen in the movies, but then again... And then again, again, the, there's... The four main characters were never shown to be archers. They never picked up a bow, they never did anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> if someone they needed to use a bow, it was usually Legolas. That said, as far back as the Kingdom of Arnor, Hobbit archers were quite useful. Which brings us to... Well, this place. The dead never showed up at the Pelennor Fields. Not in the original books. No, they just showed up for... for exactly one bloody scene. And that was dealing with the Corsairs of Umbar. Yeah. 
as they were attacking a very fancy port. It yeah. did not end well for the poor Corsairs. I actually feel sorry for them. Yeah. And then, yeah, unlike the movies, where in the movies they, in the movies they basically took the, in the movies, the dead basically <laughs> char charge the charge the Pelennor fields and yeah. To be fair to Jackson. He had to axe a lot of things for the sake of condensing it. Yeah. And... The Swan Knights of Gondor, for example, under... I believe his name was Im uh, Prince Imrahil, I believe his name was? I think so, yeah. But yeah. The Swan Knights? They never showed up. It was all Gandalf doing it. Which, to be fair... Introducing a character in one book, developing him that much, uh, it's not going to be easy, especially yes. in a four-hour production. Yeah. I, re I repeat what I said in our first video, it would have been better if they had split each of the books into two parts. Like, technically, the books themselves did. How the... I mean, what I, the... I don't know. But, yeah, like a... But, yeah, book one... Fellowship of the Ring. Book one was... Bilbo's party to the arrival at right, to the flight to the to the fjord, right, well, to the fords of Brunin. Book two was Rivendell to uh, the, to when Frodo and Sam split it off from the rest of the group to head to Mordor. Book three was the event adventures of. Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas interspersed with uh, uh, interspersed with G Gandalf, I, well, interspersed with uh, Merry and Pippin with the Ents. Oh, the Ents! They're they were another one of the major races of Middle Earth, and <laughs> giant sent giant mobile sentient tree people. <laughs> Bagok. <laughs> death! Death! This is for all the times you attacked me in Legend of Zelda! <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, book. Anyway, book four was uh, Frodo and Sam. From, uh, well, I mean, book three basically ended with Gandalf taking Pippin and heading to. Uh, uh, heading to Minas Tirith after the uh, after they first saw the nine having crossed the river, and after they and after Gandalf gave Aragorn the Palantir. Yeah, that's another thing we're gonna have to discuss. Yeah, but first let me finish my book history. I think I. Book three. Like book four was Frodo and Sam on the way to Mordor, after leaving the group at the at the river, running into Gollum and going through and finding Faramir, and basically ended just on the footsteps of Mordor. Yeah, yeah, just on the, yeah, just on the cusp of Mordor, and uh, then book five 
book five was basically more a split between Gandalf and Pippin and uh, Gandalf and Pippin, Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli, and Merry with Rohan. That was that was an interesting one. Like, with uh, like, especially with uh, well, I don't quite remember her name. Eowyn. E Eowyn, yeah. That was interesting with the Pelennor Fields and her. But again, we'll we'll get to that later. Anyway, I, book six. Again, mostly started with Frodo and Sam as they finished their journey to Mordor, and then covered the aftermath. The celebration, returning to Minas Tirith, various re resolutions, and then the path back to the Shire, then the scouring of the Shire, and finally... Frodo and like, finally Frodo and Bilbo and Gandalf. I like, Frodo, Bilbo, Gandalf, and Elrond and Galadriel sailing into the west to the Grey Haven. Like, sailing into the west from the Grey Havens. Which brings us to the other inconsistency. I presume everyone's familiar with the director's cut of <laughs> Return of the King, where Aragorn goes, Hi! I have the sword, asshole! That means I potentially have the ring. Wanna dance? <laughs> that actually happened after <laughs> the trip to us Gilead. Yeah. Nah, not us Gilead, uh, uh, Orthanc. Yeah. Where the Palantir was tossed at them. Yeah. Which at the same time involved the Duladane, the Grey Company. Yeah. Who left the Shire. Yeah. Left which also explains why the scouring was a thing. Yeah. Because they were there to, right, because they had protected the Shire, but with the Grey Company, they they weren't there anymore. But uh, yeah, again, to be fair to Jackson, that's how much material to adapt. The scouring of the the scouring of the Shire could have been an hour long movie. Yeah. And I think we were all getting a little bit tired of Lord of the Rings at the time. Yeah. Not to say that the series isn't great. It is yeah. still the foundation for all for all modern fantasy. Yeah. But it was starting to get a little fatigued at that point. Which is why The Hobbit took even longer to make. Yeah, and why it got split... And I, I assume why it got split into three books. I, well, three films. Yeah, they decided to actually adapt most of it. Yeah. But, yeah. And... And... Another one. The first... The first book... I, in book one, when they they didn't go, they, Frodo wasn't supposed to go straight to Bree. He was well, he was he was supposed to make his way to Rivendell, Rivendell overall, but uh, instead of just going to Bree, but first with a stopover in uh, Buckland, and then. As they left, they took a shortcut through the old forest and met a guy named Tom Bombadil. And then they encountered a bar a Barrow White. Ah. 
The Barrel White was where they got their sword. Was where they each got swords. I, their swords, short swords. Work of Western S. Of what you're seeing here. Yeah. Frodo, on the other hand, hey, Frodo, on the other hand, also, hey, his main sword was, well, the sword of his, hey, Bilbo's sword, Sting. Eh, screw it, I'm not gonna bother hunting. Right. Besides... But... But... Yeah. More than... Lord of the Rings... I don't know, beyond just all the movies and the books... It's also had quite a f it's also had quite a few games. I taught most of them. some are good, most not. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about some of them. I mean, we talked about some of them yesterday. More Lord of the Rings the Third Age was de very much a not. Lord of the Rings online uh, it's Lord of the Ring. Well, the Third Age wasn't a bad game, just wasn't canon. Yeah. I and did like the concept. Yeah, the concept was fine, but yeah, it wasn't canon. Didn't really, it didn't really work out too well. And like Lord of the Rings Online, uh, that definitely works out fairly well. Ah, joins here. Hello. Sorry, Hello. dinner. It's fine. Anyway, we were, we're... We were just discussing some of the inconsistencies of the series. Yeah. Well, mostly all... between the movies and the... Yeah, mostly between the movies and the books. Can I talk about Bomb Babadil yet? Yeah, he already Tom. brought him up. Damn it! We can go into a little more detail. I, I, I mainly went bare bones. All I know is that apparently people don't like talking about it. That's all I really know. <laughs> of course nobody likes. Of course nobody likes talking about it. Tolkien never gave a definitive answer. He died just... before they could get... He died before he could give a definitive answer. I just thought. Yeah. I, I we always sort of saw Tom Bombadil was just uh, some dude that they ran across. So cool as that, not magical or anything. Just some dude, like maybe maybe it feels like half giant or something. I don't know. Hmm. Uh. But, uh, yeah. We, I, we were starting to get into the topic I of... I left Sauron's the very... to open a Middle-Earth class restaurant. But I left my chef's hat back in Kiri's Ungol. You're saying? Bring it to me. Well, so once, we'll, once this guy finishes up. On the menu. Okay. So, I was... I, I was starting to shift the topic to some of the various games that have been made of the series. And I've been wanting to avoid them for good reason. Yeah, well... well what, what game were you talking about right now? I... We started... We started with a mention of uh, Lord of the Rings of the Third Age, which... Okay. Is it... Is a decent game with a decent concept, but the plot doesn't really work with canon that well. And then there's Lord of the Rings Online. It's it's a decent game, very microtransaction heavy, but it works well as a decent side story, I think. And like I said, very microtransaction heavy, and apparently fairly buggy during some of its early years. But 
I, 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 I didn't know too much about that. And then there's... I, but then there's... Well, there's also some physical games because... Uh, Fantasy Flight Games made a couple different... They made... Well, among other things, they made a tr they made a card game for it. You appear to be missing a, missing a game, what arguably the most the best game video game of Lord of the Rings game ever made. Oh, Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth Two. Oh, how could you fucking forget that one? That was the best game Lord of the Rings game they could they, they ever made. Um, well, I never played it. He doesn't have heresy. It. Fucking heresy right there. Battle for Middle Neither Earth 2. Like, well, Neither have I, Jorn. Double heresy. How could I have it? How could I have it? It was like, released during a time. It was released when I didn't have a proper computer. It was on the Xbox 360, too. I also didn't have that back then. <sighs> Alright, let me explain to you, plebeians. <laughs> An RTS. You know, you know I'm, I'm just trying this for the audience. Battle for Middle Earth 2 was a was a real time strategy game, very much in the same vein as games like Command and Conquer, and uh, it stole some of logic, even though there's slight difference. And it is arguably the first RTS ever played in my life, and it left a very profound interest in like the genre ever since then. Just like the whole commanding entire armies of orcs, goblins, men, elves, dwarves. And also, like the campaign itself, like it, like, like it was a fairly, fairly like a good campaign in my humble opinion. Like it was a bit on the bare bones side, but like overall, it you, you, you go in there, it gives you a good thing, and it uses a lot of real world look, like not real world, but real locations from Lord of the Rings mythos, and it makes it work into a very cohesive, sto a nice little storyline that makes sense and fits within the lore pretty well, in my honest, humble opinion. And uh, honestly, I, it's a kind of a tragedy, tra tragedy that like it's almost impossible to get online. And like I only own a uh, a physical cop uh, for my Xbox 360. I am tr I want to get it for the for a PC again because apparently, and like this, I learned this recently, but there was DLC for for Battle for Middle Earth 2, which involves the Witch King of Ag Ag uh, Witch King, and I was like. Why didn't I know this? Why is there like very the soon? I would totally use some of this DLC. Like I, I, and, like I'm not trying to find an online version of, of Battle for Earth 2 so I can get the DLC now. I'm just like, because like this is a whole another part of the game I need to play now. Ah. Gotcha. But yeah. <laughs> There's some other games, probably that, that I don't really know too much about. But again, Fantasy Flight Games—they made a card game. Oh, they, they made a card game for this thing, right, for this series. And then they ported, and then they ported that that game to PC and console. It's available on Steam. And on PlayStation 4. I do not know if it is on Xbox because I do not have an Xbox. But the car it's an interesting one, and when I was looking up stuff on when I was looking up games on Steam for, to potentially share with Ron so that he had near the dead marshes when a herd of Oliphants appeared. We avoided being trampled. Wait for this guy. But in a commotion, my son dropped his toy snake. Would you mind searching for it? Okay. So, back to I. When I was looking into game, when I was looking into games on Steam to potentially share, uh, to potentially recommend to Ron if someone else could. Don't. If someone else would gift them to him, I don't have the funding at the moment. But uh, I I discovered that Fantasy Flight Games had also made a board game for Lord of the Rings, and that board game had a companion app 
that was available on Steam. Hey, that is available on Steam. So, yeah. There's a lot of different games. There's a lot of different games that are out there. <sighs> some are good. Some are good. Some are not. But they're all. In, but each has their own thing. Right, so, some games are good, some of those games are good, some are not, but they all exist. I remember there being a, uh, <clears throat> like, for those of you who are familiar with Star Wars Battlefront, apparently it was a Lord of the Rings version of Star Wars Battlefront that was released around the same time, I forget what it's called. Huh. My family and I were walking. What's it called? Uh, okay, I'm, look I'm looking up right now, hang on. Oh, it was Lord of the Rings Conquest. That's what it was called. Huh. Yeah, it was like pretty much if like the way that it works out was is like very much like uh, it, it was designed off the set. It was like made by Electronic Arts, so so like and uh, Pandemic Studios, like before they went like super super idiotic. But like uh, the way that the game played is like it plays like Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront 2, only you know instead of lasers and uh, and and whatnot, it uh, it, it, they went back to swords and source uh, sword sorcery and all that good good stuff from Lord of the Rings. Gotcha. Yeah, and of course, and of course, we can't really talk about Lord of the Rings video games without mentioning the more popular. Like the most modern and most popular of the Lord of the Rings video games, that being uh, the Mordor series. Ah. Uh. Like the Shadow of Mordor, and like I'm, like I'm assuming I'm the only one who's ever ever even at least seen cutscenes of the game. <laughs> You're probably right about that. You'd probably be wrong. Really? Just because I don't pay attention to fantasy games all that much doesn't mean I'm completely ignorant. Huh. Yeah, you know, like basically, from what I've from what from what I've seen, like a Shadow of Mordor is effectively a, a prequel Lord to Lord of the Rings. Like it happened, like I believe it happens. Uh, what was it? Uh, it's like it's sort of like in the in the in between period between uh, when uh, uh, like like a, it, it takes place after uh, it happens like after the events of the Hobbit, I believe, but before the events of of Lord of the Ring of the Lord of the Rings proper, if I'm correct. Huh. And basically, what it does is that it covers the the exploits of uh, I can't remember the main character's name because it's been a while. But like, but this guy, who, like, because apparently Mordor wasn't always volcanic hellscape. Apparently, and it used to be uh, oh, and it used to have be occupied by humans. But then uh, shit hit the fan, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't yeah. always a volcanic shithole. In fact, it still wasn't a volcanic shithole. Yeah, but there were still humans living there at, at, at that point. Then, of, of, of course, the orcs came back and uh, they sort of reclaimed land. And basically, you're playing a uh, you're playing a human ranger that was like kind of like work, that was like working try, trying to defend the humans there, and uh, he is being uh, kind of haunted by the person that apparently helped um, Sauron make the make the bring of power. And I believe, yeah. Huh. Hmm. And basically, like his and his ghost sort of like haunts you and like helps you because appar apparently he eventually manages to create a new ring that lets him take control of orcs. Apparently, like subjugate them, like in order to create a new orc army to fight Sar uh, to fight Sauron. Huh. That might be something to take. That might be something to look into. What's it? Say that again. That might be something to look into. What con what systems is it available for? I believe it's available on on Steam. Let me one second. All 
Right, but is it like just Steam or is it cross cross platform? It is cross platform. Okay. We might need to look into that. As the first game was called Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, it is on the uh, Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Linux, and OS X. And also, it does have a sequel called Middle Earth Shadow of War. And it's also, it was also a game of the year. Right. It was uh, marked the biggest launch for a game based upon Tolkien's universe and was going to win several awards for the video game publications. Interesting. My funding is very limited at the moment, but I will need to look into that. Anything else? I. Well, 